Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, where every week we tell you interesting things about interesting people in about 5 minutes. And now here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi, I'm Wayne Armstrong. Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, Season 2, Episode 5, George Harrison. Born on the 25th of February 1943 in Liverpool, England, George Harrison was the son of a bus conductor called Harold and a shop assistant called Louise. He and his three siblings, Louise, Harry and Peter, likely had no idea when they were growing up, though, that he would go on to be considered one of the greatest guitarists of all time and become part of a band that would be one of the most popular music inspirations of the 20th and even the 21st century. Until he was six years old, George lived on the same dead-end street where he was born. His home was a terraced house in Wavertree, Liverpool, which had an outside toilet and a single coal fire with no central heating. George attended Dovedale Primary School and then Liverpool Institute High School for Boys. Discovering a love of music at a young age, George was influenced by the likes of Cab Calloway, George Formby and Carl Perkins, and so it came as a disappointment that his school didn't have any guitars. His disappointment was overcome, though, when in 1956 his father bought him a Dutch Egmond acoustic guitar. A friend of his father's taught him to play it, and he soon formed a skiffle band called The Rebels with his brother Peter and a friend called Arthur Kelly. Soon after, he met someone else on the bus to school with whom he would bond and share his love for music, Paul McCartney. McCartney introduced George to his friend John Lennon, and he auditioned for a place in their skiffle band, the Quarrymen, which would later evolve into one of the biggest bands in history, the Beatles. Harrison's career would span nearly 40 years of active music production and several years in film production, and he contributed at least two original pieces of music for every album that the Beatles released. This undersung hero of the Beatles has become known as the quiet guitarist due to his unassuming mannerism, but he composed some true classics, including his most famous work by far, while he toured with the Beatles, Something, which became the Beatles' second most covered piece of music. It was through George's experience and love of Hindu mythology and Indian music that he helped lead the Beatles towards their shift into folk rock and then later into Indian classical music. This unique blending of Indian music and European rock produced some of the greatest hits the Beatles ever had and its uniqueness helped establish George Harrison as an innovator. On the 21st of January 1966, George Harrison married the model Patty Boyd whom he had met during the production of the Beatles movie A Hard Day's Night in 1964 when she was 19. The couple split after eight years and divorced in 1977. When the breakup of the Beatles eventually came in 1970, it didn't stunt or even slow down George Harrison's artistic career in the least, and he went on to achieve some of his greatest work. Some of these included his first album after the breakup, All Things Must Pass, and contained within that album one of his most popular pieces of standalone music, the song My Sweet Lord. Harrison used his fame, wealth and musical talents to help humanity in any way he could, and the first charity concert he contributed to was in 1971, where he played for the first time with Ravi Shankar. This initial charity concert, called Concert for Bangladesh, was actually the first of many that he would participate in, as it later evolved into the ultimate benefit concert of the 1980s, Live Aid. On the 2nd of September 1978, George married a secretary from Dark Horse Records called Olivia Trinidad Arias, and they had a son together called Danny. They lived in an old English manor house which Harrison had restored on Henley-on-Thames, and ten people had to be hired just to maintain the 36-acre garden. His musical career at this point started to slow down, as he preferred to spend more time with his family. In the late 80s, though, he started a group called the Travelling Wilburys, with Roy Orbison, Jeff Lynne, Bob Dylan and Tom Petty. 
The group met in Dylan's garage to record their music and they released two albums under pseudonyms titled Travelling Wilburys Volume 1 and, mischievously, Travelling Wilburys Volume 3, which was recorded by the group as a four-piece, following Roy Orbison's death in December 1988. In 1994, George Harrison collaborated once again with Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, and along with the help of Jeff Lynne, the Beatles anthology project came into being, with the group releasing two new singles, their first since they had split in 1970. Free as a Bird was released in December 1995, and in March 1996 they released Real Love, but Harrison refused to work on a third. He would appear again later though, playing guitar on two tracks of Ringo Starr's album, Vertical Man. Harrison was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1997, which he blamed on a life of heavy smoking. He underwent radiotherapy which appeared to be successful. On the 30th of December 1999, he was attacked in his home by an intruder who was fought off by his wife Olivia, but not until George had received more than 40 stab wounds, for which he was hospitalised. In May of 2001, George had a cancerous growth removed from one of his lungs and was then treated in July in Switzerland for a brain tumour. On the 12th of November the same year, Harrison, Starr and McCartney were together for the last time as three weeks later, on the 29th of November 2001, at the age of 58, George Harrison died. His legacy is one that will live on forever in the hearts and minds of people who have heard his music and been touched by his kindness, his generosity and his love for mankind. George Harrison was buried in the Hindu tradition, having his ashes cremated and spread into the Ganges and the Yamuna rivers in India. I hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. If you'd like to see a transcript of the show, head on over to the 5 Minute Biographies website at www.5minutebiographies.com where you'll also find many other biographies that have not yet been turned into podcast episodes. If you'd like to make a suggestion for a future biography then please use the Suggest a Biography form on the site. And also, if you get a few spare minutes, it would be really great if you could leave me an honest review on iTunes. And if you don't want to miss any future episodes, why not subscribe while you're there? You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, and if you'd like to get in touch, please use the Contact Us form on the site, or leave me a comment at the end of the biography. Finally, if you feel you'd like to make a donation towards the cost of producing more episodes, then you can do so through through PayPal at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash donate. Any help, no matter how small, would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast at www.5minutebiographies.com.